Yeah. Is that necessary? <laughs> well, that just says this is cocaine. Is <laughs> or Canadian. Neil Pert. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, so that's, 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 brush, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that brush, Yeah, is that necessary? Uh, to, well, to play what he plays, yes, yeah. probably, do you know what I mean? But, um, what would you do with it? What would I do with like Sell them. Exactly. <laughs> 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 you know, buy a new car. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Um, yeah, I think it's, you know, I, I, but, you know, Keith Moon had bigger drum sets than that, yeah. so. There are three I still say, you know, he needed that, didn't he? I mean, everybody just needed the noise. It's just like yeah, you can't, yeah, you know, for courses. You can't do a, a four-bar roll on two drums. No. <laughs> it's like the roll in the fat bottom girls. <laughs> the hey, hey, Tom's. <laughs> and um, and what about here? We've got Bobby Gillespie here in oh, Justice and Mary Chain. Yeah. So that's a bit different. A yeah. little kind of Mo Tucker vibe. That's how it. The first time I ever had before I bought the kit, I had them. Um, snare drum and a floor drum from something. I, I yeah. don't know why, I didn't realise bass drums played with, with the pedal, you know what I mean? And, and like, I thought you played it like that, doom, 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 doom. So for about six or seven months before I got my kit, I used to play it like, like that, like that. Yeah, but, and I, I was in Mary, you know, I got into Mary Chain later. So. But I mean, he, he certainly, I mean, I'm, you know, he got the job done with just those two drums, like on those records. So the motor, isn't yeah. it? Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's such, they're such short, strong songs and so simple that you couldn't really have anything else. Yeah. yeah. If you had Neil Peart's drums. It yeah, it's, 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 it's the opposite. Yeah. Neil Peart yeah. yeah. probably had, you know, their kit. But no, fucking hidden behind his fourth kit. So <laughs> <laughs> We've got Tommy Lee's revolving drum kit. Oh. What's going on here? Cocaine again. Cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> Would you want one of those? Oh God, no! <laughs> I'm not all twenty years ago, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I get, I get motion sick. Right? <laughs> I don't see it. I don't see it. So what's? I, I mean, yeah. Why is he doing that? What's that about? Because I don't know. Part of the show. Yeah. 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 So just, it's yeah. Show, showmanship. Yeah. 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 I mean, just something to to try and set himself and that band apart from the other bands. Like, don't go. I mean, especially. I don't mean to talk shit, but like Motley Crue, that. Um, just sound like so many other bands. I suppose like they had to do that to get over the the lack of you know Tunes. good songs. Yeah, <laughs> but also to, to distinguish themselves from all the other bands doing that. Like, well, we could go see fucking Rat, or we could go see blah blah blah, or Motley Crue. Well, Motley Crue's guy fucking flips upside down. <laughs> okay, let's go see them. And also, if you're sort of a, you know as a drummer, you've got the guitarist running around the front, and the singer can jump around, but you're sort of stuck in the middle of the band. Yeah. Maybe we just feeling unloved. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody just looks for me. Trying to get Pamela Anderson's attention. Because <laughs> here with Dave Clark, Dave Clark live, he's not stuck in the back, is he? He's no. got the drum kit in front. So like every other top of the pops performance in the early seventies had the drums in the front, yeah, didn't it? Yeah. So why are they in the back now? It's because when you when you're playing live you want the drums to come from behind you, innit? If you're a singer or a bass player, I mean cause the drums sort of project when they forward. So it's just I, I think it's practicality, yeah. I think so too. I think in the, the early days, um before like good amplifiers and stuff they you know put the just you know when, when, when you know like everything wasn't mic'd live you know it'd just be a band up on a bandstand it's like the drums would be the loudest thing so put them in the back and i but i do i never thought of the fact that it's like if the drums are in the back then it goes forward and everybody can hear and feed off that that makes a lot of sense. does it take a lot of space isn't it They've got a lead singer that's like, jumping around. The last thing you need is a fucking drummer. <laughs> 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 Falling on the drum kit. Fuck off, don't get in the back. <clears throat> yeah, that's 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 what it's about. Yeah. 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 And the, with recording. That's Do we need one of these? Depends. Some people do. Yeah. I I mean it, it helped me immensely actually play into to one. It's a different way. I mean Loads of people play with clicks, so I play with yeah. click, you know, some, sometimes, sometimes I don't, but for courses again, you know, if you've got loads of loops and, you know, and sequences and things, you know what I mean, then you have to have a, have a click to follow. Makes it a hell of a lot easier 
later on in recording as well. Yeah. If you've got yeah. the drums when they're like there, then you can overdo stuff. Whereas if it's not a click, it's just yeah, not in there. I've heard um, I, a, a couple of years ago went and, and just uh, backed up all the dats I had of you know like my old bands and listen to some of the really early recordings it's just the tempos are like air, 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 and um so sometimes I mean, it works though did it there yeah, sometimes <laughs> yeah it didn't for me but um, yeah. you know <laughs> but some some songs though after I've like tempo changes in it and i'm slowing down you know on, yeah. on drop downs and stuff like building up and then so mm. you can't play them with click then yeah. But some songs just need to be bad, bad, bad. Yeah, with with recording, uh, particularly. For a lot of live and recording. Yeah. Yeah. Both. Yeah. So, do you um, do you prefer playing live or recording? If, well, if, if you had to choose between them. Yeah. What's the difference? Like, how are they different for you? <coughs> oh, the live lives in the moment, isn't it? It's like um, that's that's all the all adrenaline is and um, you know the instant. Gratification if there's people there watching it. You know? And you can. I like my recordings, like it's there forever. I mean, I, it's, um, I don't know, well, for me, there's nothing more exciting than recordings. I mean, and coming back and listening to it for the first time to see where you are. I mean, yeah. That Trump's playing live every day for me, but. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know. Then you get bored of it, you know. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't. You just want to get out of here, you know I mean? Yeah. I'm near too much as it is. Yeah, I wouldn't want to have to choose between yeah. either because they're both so totally different. And I think, yeah, you, you tour for a while and then you're excited to make the next record. And then after that, it's like, God, yeah, let's go play live. And um, it's a good good cycle. Mm -hmm. I mean, for different person, isn't it? Yeah. What about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I think like playing live is obviously more media and it's more fun in that sense. But I think I probably all my tunes either, but I really love recording and just like spending time actually being able to consider how it's going to sound rather than just like sometimes you might not get the sound check or whatever, so it's kind of like you do it on the fly. A recording. Because usually what you do, what you've ended up recording is roughly what you end up playing live, isn't it? even yeah. though you can play them live before you record them. Out, but, but the recording is the point where you settle on your part. I thought you some better with No, you can still embellish it live, but. But yeah, I mean, and also, yeah, it's like when you record, you can actually listen back to what you're doing because you only, you know, you can be, you know, practicing a bunch like, oh, okay, man, I think it sounds like this. And then you record it and listen to how it actually, actually fits don't. in with the rest of the stuff. Like, okay, I need to wheel, wheel this in a little bit. This is a little too busy or yeah, it's kind of boring. I need, to, I need to go a little bit more or, you know, like this is working, this isn't. Um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell exactly until you can actually sit and, and just listen and hear it in the context of, of everything. Um. So what about this, the last one, my last picture? <laughs> Do we like these? Yeah. I mean... Yeah. Why not again? Yeah. yeah. Horses for horses. I mean, I wouldn't... Electronic drums, beat drums. I wouldn't want to play on them exclusively, but you know, I'd, I'd good if you've got a little flat in it. Yeah, when you've done a <laughs> up. Yeah, you've got to put your headphones on. That's true, or just you know. I haven't played one of them for years, but they all put for what I heard. But they're pretty good now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can just you know get sounds that you just can't with with acoustic drums and still get the <clears throat> you know because you can program drums all day and it's not no matter what you do, it's not going to feel the same as someone actually. And they're playing them, and, and uh, you know, they're just some sounds you can't get with acoustic drums. That with those, you get the feel of the person playing them, but these f fucking crazy sounds. So, I think you know, in the right, the right context, <laughs> yeah. yeah. How about you? Could you, yeah, yeah. I, um, we had one in the high school I went to, and it was like really good to practice on. And obviously, if, if you're able to that on sound with you, bashing away on drums, and the only sound you get is like the tapping on the heads of those ones, so they're really good. But I'll tell you, there's, I've, I've 
I learned what, what hell is, and that's actually going into the drum room at Guitar Center when they're, they're like, I don't know if you have Guitar Centers over here, but in the in the States, they're a, a big chain of, of, you know, corporate chain music store, and they'll, you know, they have like the guitar room and the drum room, and um, they'll usually have a bunch of electronic kits set up, and, you know, you're walking through the guitar room, and it's like, eight dickheads trying to play guitar <laughs> riffs and you go in the drum room and it's it's usually people that have never played drums in their lives that are there with, you know, some friend that's probably one of the dickheads playing Metallica riffs. And, oh, what's this do? And so you walk in the drum room you're like, fuck, I just need some sticks and it's just like eight people like, doo, 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 It's like when the kids go up and up the drums. <laughs> but yeah, magnified. To, yeah, just like, yeah, I no longer fear hell because I survived the drummer and the guitar center. <laughs> what do you think is hell then for the drummer? Huh? Good interviews. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be the back. <laughs> no, you should be like the back five in the front. <laughs> Talking, singing, and drumming at the yeah. same time. Oh, okay. yeah, the, 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 oh, getting cramp. Yeah, the down. Getting cramp in your hands. Yeah. Fuck, yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. fucking horrible. Because yeah. they. they it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's frightening. Yeah. Because you can't feel, you know, you can't, pl it's, it's like, you know, it's like you sat on your hand. Especially for if it's 20 like minutes, it's gone all numb. The and second song kills. into the set, like, oh boy, oh yeah. Right. What about you? That's pretty bad. I think breaking heads as well. Uh, like, maybe if you're doing a gig and you're like third song in and you go through the bass drum scheme and you haven't got another head or whatever, then. That's what you're trying to fuck up. What's the worst thing that's happened at a gig then? Uh -huh. Coming up on a knee. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm falling off my drum stool. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get much worse than that. No, well, for, for, you know, for a playing point of view, but at the time I was pissing myself off. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say getting dosed uh, before the first time we played Glastonbury and like coming up and not realizing like all of a sudden just feeling really weird and not knowing and then it's like all right you guys are on and looking out over this uh, sea it's of people because nice. we played we played right before radiohead so all of <laughs> these people were there lined up to see radiohead and you know it's just like but still they're there and you look out and like and our, <laughs> our tour manager i'll never forget it's like we're walking out he's like there's 90,000 people out there. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> that was, man, a hellish show. But then it ended up being awesome because, like, we got done, and I was still tripping my head off, and I ran over and, and saw the furries, and it was amazing. So. So it wasn't the acid. Th yeah, I think it was, yeah. I'm not sure where it came from, but, man. Have you had any sort of... Um, Bad accidents falling off your yeah, drum I've fallen off my drumstick too many times really. Uh, I did we did like a gig at a festival last summer where the stage kind of backed off onto the seat, and luckily there was this like mesh net behind the drums. But if that hadn't have been there, because I fell back and then I was kind of like using my elbow to prop me up and still play. But yeah, if that hadn't have been there, then maybe I wouldn't have ever been seen again. But really, swept away at sea. Yeah. He died doing what he loved, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can only hope to be so lucky, right? <laughs>